shall forevermore. In the morning, receive all the glory. Receive all the glory. In the day, receive all the honor. Receive all the honor. And on the summer, we give you the praise. And the rain shall forevermore. Father, to you, we hold on to you. To you, Jesus. We hold on to you. To you, ancient today. We hold on to you. We hold on to you. And the rain shall forevermore. Oh, 
I, I called my sister and I complained to her. My sister said, ah, that is it that somebody or something wanted to run you down? I said, nobody will run me down because I did not start it with anybody. I, did not, I started this business with my own money, which is not even up to months. So when I called my mother, my mother said the same thing. I told my friend, she asked me to come to one ministry with her. Then I complained it to the sister. I was very confused. Then I said to myself, if I should go to this ministry, that means my 21 days program is in vain. I said, no, I will not go to any ministry. I must challenge God. If God has been doing it for others, he will surely do it for me. So reaching on two weeks uh, Thursday, when we came here for businessmen uh, fellowship. So we are asked to go to the altar. So when I went to the altar, I cried to God. I, I, I was even confused. I didn't even know what to pray again. I only said, God, if it is your will that I'll be run down. Because I remember your word. It says, the thought you have for me is a thought of peace and not of evil. So after that prayer, I went back. Reaching on, on Friday, I didn't go to work. So this last week, Friday, I checked my record. Low and behold, I was even expecting that maybe it will happen again. So low and behold, I was even having a, I checked my record. It was okay. I was even having a over. I was like, I was I owing anybody? So when I called my sister, my sister said, I should thank God. That thank God I noticed it earlier. If not, Maybe at the, by the end of this month, I wouldn't have known where I would be. Is it that I'll be running to the streets asking, begging for money or whatever? So I really want to testify to the glory of God for restoring me, for not making me to be put to shame. Amen. There's nobody that God will put to shame in the name of Jesus. Divine, your divine promotion, either in your office or in your what? Business. I want to make one or two establishments. The first one is when you look at that text of scripture this morning from the dream of the king that Daniel interpreted the first establishment is the kingdom of God is supreme over every other kingdom And then the second one is prayer actions. Prayer actions. I will use plural because of what I call corporate prayer and chain prayer that was carried out in that text. And then the third establishment is the promotion. That Daniel experienced. And that promotion was brought about by his God. And then another establishment that is very, very important for us today is in your dealings, in whatever you do, if you want to secure.
What is going on in his mind is what? Jealousy. Envy. Hatred. And he will smile. Hey, Chai, I like your plan, oh, but this year. Not like. You don't like your plan. He will go and block that source that will enable you grow and be what? Promoted. The king said, I will not tell you. In fact, the king threatened them and said, if you do not interpret it for me, I will execute all of you. Praise the Lord. Turn to the person by your side. Turn to the person by your side. Tell him or her, use bad luck and close your mouth. Tell it another person, use bad luck and close your mouth. Stop talking too much. Praise the Lord. Somebody was talking to me yesterday and the person told me there's a problem that she's having but that she has never shared that problem to anybody. And everybody is asking, ah, what is the problem? What is the problem? She closed her word. Say, I will solve the problem. She kept on praying about it. Close your mouth. In, in the church, when we go to confessional, when they teach us about confession as seminarians before you become in canon law, it is said that there are some matters that are of occult nature. Occult means what? Secrets. Something that is supposed to be preserved. That is why any reasonable Catholic priest is not supposed to joke with a confessional. Anything you are told they are dies with you till you die. That's what it means. Now, the church went further to say, if you use carelessly what is told you at the confessional to make joke and talk, you are trying what is called latte sentencia, automatic excommunication from the church. You'll be moving around like a priest, but you're not a priest. And for you to be forgiven from that, you must go to the Pope to get absolution. There is nothing that happens at the confessional that me and Father John can sit together and talk. There is no, if at all he wants to talk to me, if anything he heard at the confessional, I will do a la do do baby. I will behave like I have not even seen him or hearing him. Because we are not supposed to discuss it. And that is the what upholds. Keep your secrets. And that was all confounded this man. Now in their failure to tell the king his dream, the king said to them, I will kill you. And he gave orders. When the day is expired, he gave order to his commanding officer in the person of Ariuk, who was to execute them and then he set out. But their friends, now, uh, the evil people will say, or the evil adage will say that, Ufaka na rotamano metotrandegini. Does, huh? When one hand commits the sin of touching the oil, it will touch what? Every other one. Stay. Now, Daniel and his friends, who we are foreigners in this land, and also we are in administration, we are also going to be fished out if the dream is not interpreted to the king. And so the officer went and started, the word of God said, they started searching for Daniel and all his friends also in order that they might be executed. That means untimely death. Every untimely death for you this is in Holy Ghost. And if that happens, the, the plan of God for their life being in that land will be cut short. And then, Daniel heard about it and he approached the commanding officer. What did the king say? Why did the king say they should be executed? Because they were not able to interpret the dream. And he said, let me see the king. <laughs> let me see the words. Permission was granted one time. The king gave him audience and he spoke to the king. And he said, give me time. I will interpret the dream for you. Anointing in action. So, anointing in what? When God's anointing and favor is on you, wherever you go, doors will open for you. Where other people get 
to and fail, you will do what? Succeed. And that's my prayer for you this season. That God's anointing on you will be activated to a level that nobody will say no to you. Men may have said no to you before now. They will begin to say yes to you. Because of your sacrifice, God's favor will always chart your path in the name of Jesus. The king listened and said, no problem, I give you time. That's why I'm coming to one of the establishments. I said, corporate action of prayer. He went back and he said to his friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let us go on our world's news. And he said to them, beg the God of heaven that he might reveal this dream for me. Amen. Corporate action. We did a corporate action at the beginning of this year and we are still doing corporate action. Every Monday we do a corporate action. Every Thursday we do a corporate action. And every Friday we do a corporate auction action and you think it's a waste. The word of God in the book of Hebrews says, do not absent yourself from the assembly of what? Believers. Because God's anointing is heavy in the assembly of God's children and there his power prevails. And so they went into prayer. In fact, if you go to the book of Esther, chapter 3, chapter 4, and chapter 5, Esther, Mordecai, did the same thing. Esther asked Mordecai to convoke uh, the assembly of the Jewish people who were in the kingdom of Ahasuerus, who had declared the extermination of the people of Israel. Mordecai tore his clothes, went into prayer with the people. Esther went into prayer. There was corporate action and chain prayer. And at the end, victory was granted. And that's what Daniel employed. He told his friends, we'll go into prayer. And after the end of that prayer, what happened? God revealed himself to him. He revealed the dream. He came and he told him, he told the king the dream. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sorry, the person in the media room, can I see that text of Daniel chapter 2? Daniel chapter 2. Esther baby is not coming up. Look up for verse 44 for me. Okay. Now, I'd like you to look at that. Or if you have your Bible. Now, it says that at the time of those rulers... The God of heaven will establish a kingdom that will never what? It will never be what? Can I hear everybody speak it? It will never be what? But will completely destroy all those what? Empires and then last what? Forever. Amen. Where is this kingdom? Where is this kingdom? Where is the kingdom? That kingdom is a church of God. That kingdom is a house of God. Because in the interpretation of that dream, it says that a rock that came out from the mountain came and shattered every other thing that was standing and then stood and nobody could stop it. And he said, that rock is the kingdom of what? God. Where the will of God is done. Wherever God's will prevails, men can do nothing about it. Praise the Lord. How many times have people tried to destroy the church of God from history? Have they succeeded? The Roman Empire crumbled because it was fighting against the church. So many nations and so many powers have crumbled because they've turned against the church of God. Because Jesus says, the kingdom of God will everly do what? Stand. Amen. And then the Lord said in Matthew's gospel chapter 6 verse 33, he says, seek you first the kingdom of God and every other thing will be what? Added unto you. Every other thing. 
Because in that kingdom, there is everything. And that which is in that kingdom of God is the will of God. And the will of God is goodness. The will of God is peace. The will of God is progress. The will of God is growth. The will of God is health. The will of God is establishment in such a manner that you cannot be shaken. When the prophet Jeremiah gave the prophecy about this kingdom in Jeremiah chapter 30, 31, verse 33, the Lord says, The days are coming when I will enact a new covenant with my people Israel. And he says in that kingdom, in that enactment, nobody will speak to anybody about everything. Anything. Everything will be written on their word, heart. I will put my law within them and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my word, people. That is that kingdom that God was talking about. And in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5, when the Lord gave instruction to Moses about this kingdom that he was to establish, the Lord said to him, he must take a picture of in the constructing the place where God will be represented. He said the picture he will be given will be the picture of what was what he had been revealed to and that was the kingdom of God the work they do as priests is really only a copy and a shadow of what is in heaven praise the Lord it is the same as it was with Moses when he was about to build the sacred tent God told him be sure to make everything according to the pattern you were shown on the word on the mountain. And what was that pattern? That pattern was what was in heaven. Praise the Lord. And then he said, but now Jesus has been given priestly work, which is superior to theirs. And so the pattern must be pattern of heaven. And so that establishment that will subdue every other authority is God's word, kingdom. And we are children of that kingdom. That's why the, that song we used to say, Citizens of heaven, children of the house of the Lord, we are going to the Father through the Son in the Spirit. That's the pattern. And then in this pattern, when John the Baptist came on board in Mark's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 15, he said, the time has come for the establishment of the kingdom of what? God. And that was what he proclaimed. And he pointed to the people when eventually Jesus came. He said, see him, the Lamb of God, who has come to establish this kingdom. And he says, he's the one who takes away the sins of the world. And so, my dear friends, when you are in that kingdom, your promotion is assured. I, you remember, some time ago I said that in that kingdom, there is no failure. In that kingdom, there is no disappointment. In that kingdom, there is no disease or sickness. In that kingdom, your promotion will certainly come to pass. It is effective of who stands against it. And so he gave that. And now, because of this kingdom, so before I go further, amen. Amen. Since, I think, 2019, 2020, and 2021, what happened? What happened world over? Huh? What? COVID-19. Huh? And within that period, what happened? First time in history, churches were closed down. Businesses we are shut down. Since I was born, now I'm getting old. Older than some of us. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I know that as a little child I came to Portacourt from minor seminary to date. I have never heard, I used to hear Iku, Iku, I never heard that Ikoku was closed down for three months. I hope so. That was about three months. Or more than that. It was closed down for what? Three months, the first time. International airports worldwide were what? Closed down. B 
businesses worldwide were what? Closed down. Big companies were what? Closed down. In December, somebody came from the U.S. and he said, Father, that car companies, companies that produce cars in the U.S. shut down. And he said, because of it, there is scarcity of cars. That's why today, if you go to the market, you see that the prices of cars have what? Risen. Cars you bought 3 million, you go, they will tell you 6 point something what? Million. He said, at the point, they stop producing cars because of COVID-19. People, anywhere you go, you put on what? Face mask. But today, what is happening? And then, the theory, they, they came up with a conspiracy word, theory. Some people are coming up now, debunking. Some people are saying, ah, there was conspiracy here. There was accusation upon what? Which kingdom is subsisting now? Who is in control of the universe? Is it China? Is it India? Is it uh, Russia? Is it America? Is it Canada? God. Amen. God has proven to us that the world belongs to him. Men can only make noise. Men can only make effort. And because God is in charge, I assure you your promotion is assured. I say your promotion is assured. You will not die in that pain. You will not die in that fear. You will resurrect. I give you this word of God. The psalmist in Psalm 75, verse 5, says, Promotion cometh from what? The Lord. He judges, he sees, and he knows who and who to promote at what time. I tell them to stop their boasting. Tell those who are boasting about you. Judgment does not come from the east or from the world, the west, from the north or from the world, south. It is God who is the world, condemning someone and acquitting world, others. The Lord holds a cup in his hand filled with strong wine. Sorry, that's going fine. Verse 6 and verse 7. But the fact that some, in some translations, judgment does not come from the east or from west, south or not. Go over to verse 7. It is the Lord who does what? This translation, some other translations will use the word promotion. It is God who decides your word promotion because it sits in the divine council. And there, he determines the fate of each and every one of us. So when someone tells you, I will deal with you. Tell the person, you cannot deal with me. God has the power. Amen. And the Lord will establish you in the name of Jesus. And so, Daniel was promoted because God gave him utterance and God gave him an anointing. Amen. Please, I'd like you to look at your hand. Everybody in this church, look at your hand. What do you see? Eh? Akaraka Gyokoya? What is your Akaraka? What is your destiny? Answer. Look at your hand. Tell yourself this morning God has ingrained in me promotion. And I claim it this morning. My promotion must manifest this year in the name of Jesus. You are a child destined to be promoted. I speak to somebody here this morning. Irrespective of wherever they may have thought that you shall not be promoted, that God will fish you out in that place and promote you in the name of Jesus. To the shame of the devil, God will promote you. Daniel was a slave. 
in a foreign land. God gave him an anointing. God gave him a, a gift that will put him on the lame light so that he can be promoted over his enemies, over those who captured him and took him to the land of slavery. And in the land of slavery, God made him somebody, not just a minister. He became a minister of ministers. He was promoted above his equals so that in the face of his colleagues and peers, he will not hide in shame. Child of God, you've been hiding in shame. I tell you this morning, because you have stepped your foot on God's ground, on the kingdom of God, you stand on the kingdom of righteousness, God will uplift you. You've been hiding in shame when you see your colleagues. You will no longer hide in shame. There are some persons when they go in the assembly of their colleagues, they will be hiding. When they come out, you just look. That one comes with a limousine jeep. The other one comes with a Prado jeep. And you came with Legadis Ben. So your story will change. When they call the meeting of Omona, you will not go. Not because, they, and they will claim they want to poison you. No, not because they want to poison you. Because you know that your age mates that went to Patakot and Lagos with you the same year, they are coming back with words, cars, and boys around them who will be serving them. And you say, no, I cannot go. Child of God, I pray for you that this year will be a different story for you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the Lord looked for Daniel and he used him to subdue and to change the orientation of the king and also to tell the king that our hope must not depend on this world everything in the world is passing by some of us brag and proud ourselves because of what we think we have the king had all the authority he said your authority will go down another kingdom will come up that one will go down another one will come up that one will go down another one will emerge that will scatter every other kingdom but finally that one will be crushed and the only kingdom that will stand will be the kingdom of god child of god i don't know what you are putting your hope on i don't know what you are trusting on but if you do not trust on the lord you are wasting your time begin to seek god begin to seek the kingdom of god begin to seek god's righteousness and your promotion will be assured Human powers will fail you. Material success will fail you. But there is somebody who will not fail. And that is the living God. It is God who brings favor to us. When Daniel interpreted the dream, the king bowed down and began to worship his God. God was proclaimed the supreme God in the land. And every other God goes down. I don't know who you have put your trust in. Some have put their trust in charms. This morning they got up, they put it on their waist. I hope there's nobody with any charm in this church. If you are with any charm in this church to go to shop, to do things, to do wonders, America wonders, that thing will fail you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> and as you move out this morning, I'd like you to lift up your hand. If the place where you are going for your business and there are people, your neighbors around you that have some other authority and power they operate with. I impart on you the grace of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. And as you step into that environment, there will be spiritual neutralization of every occultic power and manipulation in the name of Jesus. Every breeze that we blown to stifle your business, to stifle your office this morning. May they be counteracted in the name of Jesus. Every air, every powder that is going to be released in the atmosphere this morning to make children of God not to rejoice this week. May that powder be dissipated in the name of Jesus. Every occultic incantation and projection, may they be neutralized in the name of Jesus. May the anointing of God on you this morning be a fire to dispel any other fire in the environment where you are going this morning in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Can 
to this man and let there be confusion in the name of Jesus. Amen. Sometimes some of you get to your shop, sit down, some of you get to your shop and you discover that something has been poured in front of your shop. Let the anointing that follows you dispute those in this morning in the name of Jesus. Amen. The seat you sit upon, the position you stand upon, let that position be energized by the power of God in you in the name of Jesus. And no projection from the enemy about to prevail in the name of Jesus. Amen. You belong to a kingdom that is eternal. You also belong to a kingdom that is temporal. Temporal means that it is established on this earth. You belong to a kingdom that's eventually is divine because the church of God where you belong and where you put your trust is divine it was created by God himself and that kingdom is consuming the word of God says the kingdom of God suffered violence and the violent created by what? force the church has been through a lot but at the end his eternal nature will be manifested. In fact, it says that kingdom in First John chapter one, verse one, verse four through verse one through four, and then verse fourteen says he came among his own people. They did not recognize him, but for those who did recognize him, he gave them power to be what sons and daughters of what God. And then in verse fourteen, he says he came. We saw his glory. His glory that darkness could not overpower. The darkness of this world has tried to cage the church. And even children of God. Sometimes you hear, when you hear some person's testimony, how they started, it seems as if they were caged. But one day God says, today, now wait it, today. It will end today. And they will break out. And once you break out, with the anointing of God on you, nobody will stop you. I say nobody will stop you. Daniel broke out and nobody stopped him. But child of God, you must employ their tactics. Corporate actions. Chain prayers must be your activity. Tell people to pray with you. Like I asked somebody somewhere, do you have a prayer partner? Sometimes do you pray with your wife? Do you pray with your husband? Do you pray as a family? How many times has your wife blessed you as you are going out? Have you ever told your wife, bless me, pray for me today? The prayer of women most times attract God, especially when they pray over their husbands. Yes, the man is the head of the family, but God has made the woman a special instrument in your life. Have you told her, bless me this morning, speak word of progress over my head. Have you ever held hand with that woman you call your wife and prayed together? If you do it, you will have a testimony. Meaning that you're working together. Corporate action, 
brings victory. And that's what Daniel never joked with. Daniel was obscured, but he was raised above every other person. And secondly, my dear brothers and sisters, when God promotes you, remember those who started with you. Don't forget them. He remembered his friends. He had because of his promotion in office, he also brought about the promotion of his friends. They were made governors in different parts of the empire. Corporate anointing brings corporate upliftment. And in that way, God reigns supreme. Let not your promotion lead you to selfishness. In the book of Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 10, a man came from obscurity to limb light done by God in the person of Saul. When the Israelites decided to have a human king, they appealed to Samuel who spoke to God and God warned them but eventually God accepted their request. And then they cast lots and that lot fell on the tribe of Benjamin. And then in the tribe of Benjamin they cast another lot and it fell on the tribe of of the clan of the, the tribe of the Matrites. And in the tribe of the Matrites, then they cast another lot and it fell on the clan of Kish. And that clan of Kish was, it fell eventually on Saul. And then Saul hid himself among bags or baggage or baggages, sorry, baggage. He was hiding because he never wanted to become the king. He never wanted to serve. Child of God, nothing is hidden from the Lord. And then Saul consulted God. And the Lord said, they said to the Lord, Did he come with the people? Is he in this gathering? And the Lord said, Yes, he is in the gathering. But he hid himself in the baggage so that nobody will see him. No matter where you hide, God will fish you out and promote you. When that stamp of authority is upon you, he will reveal where you are and he will locate you. He will reveal you. He will rebrand you. He will relocate you and he will promote you. And that was what he did to Saul. When eventually Saul came out and the people saw him, the word of God says he stood higher than every other person in stature. That was why when David, when, when Samuel went to anoint David in the house of in the house of Jesse he was looking at appearance because Saul was a huge man nobody was taller than him and the Lord said do not look at the size I do not look at size child of God is not about your size but it's about the God who has chosen you to be an instrument of promotion to be an instrument of revelation to be an instrument of joy to be an instrument of deliverance for you shall be selected by the Lord and because he has selected you divinely you shall attain where God wants you to be Amen You are Yahweh You are your family but you're not a first son everybody runs around you you think it's because of your power because God has put a stamp of authority on you that nobody could even stand stop that is why you must give praise and thanks to God David went back to Daniel went back to God and he said God thank you he gave back praise to God stand in praise and praise God for the position that he has already taken you to because it's not your making. And another thing you must do, you must offer a sacrifice to God. Book of Judges chapter 6. Gideon, 
hid himself because of fear. But he never knew he was a great man of valor. Where he was hiding, threshing floor, in a dark corner, the Lord came there to fish him out. And the Lord, the angel of the Lord said to him, You man of valor. And he said, How dare you call me a man of valor? If I am a man of valor, and if there is a God in Israel, why are the Midianites suppressing our people? Where are those marvels that God did in the past that our forefathers told us about? The Lord said to him, you are the man who will bring that to pass. I speak to someone here this morning, you are the one that will bring it to pass. Amen. That is a divine promotion that God has stamped on you. You might be hiding your head under the pew. He will fish you out. Because Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 3 says, he, he reveals hidden mysteries. Hidden mysteries are known to God. And Gideon said, how can he be? I am a man from the least tribe. He said, God has chosen and has promoted you to be the commander of the army of Israel. Amen. Amen. When God chooses you, he waits for you to make a sacrifice. Gideon said to him, If I have been chosen by God, wait for me. I am coming. And he left. He went and brought a sacrifice. He brought meat. He brought bread. And he came back. The angel of the Lord was standing. And he said, put it on that rock. And he put it on the rock. He used his staff. And he touched it. Fire came and consumed it. Child of God, God is waiting for your sacrifice for the confirmation of your promotion. Some of us, our, our promotion is dormant somewhere because we've never offered God the sacrifice of thanks and praise. From that moment, Gideon became a warrior. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him. I pray that through your sacrifice, through your early morning sacrifice of coming here every Monday, your promotion will shine out. Amen. Your upliftment will shine out. Amen. Through your time that you give unto the Lord, you will be elevated in the name of Jesus. Amen. Stop thinking of yourself as nobody. You are somebody in the sight of God. Moses was on exile. God drew him from there and made him a lawgiver and a liberator of the people of Israel. Aaron was a slave, but eventually the Lord took him and made him a high priest. So shall the Lord make you a high priest. Amen. Saul, from obscurity, God took him to the scepter. He made him a king over his people. So shall the Lord make you a king over his people. Jesus all over him. The Lord picked him from the bush and sent him to the throne. I pray that through that your suffering you will be uplifted by the Lord in the name of Jesus. In 1 King chapter 11 verse 26 through verse 35 Jeroboam was a slave but the Lord lifted him up and made him a king in the land of Israel. So shall he lift you up in the name of Jesus. Daniel was a captive 
to the Babylonian kingdom. But the Lord lifted him and made him a prime minister. Joseph was sold into slavery. From slavery, he was lifted to the prime minister in Egypt. In fact, you can call him the king or the pharaoh of Egypt. Promotion comes from the Lord, not from what men say to you. I don't know who may have told you that you will never grow. Child of God, I pray that your anointing of promotion will liberate you in the name of Jesus. If I believe it, can I hear you shout a louder amen? If you believe it, can I see you stand and begin to talk to God and begin to tell God my promotion. It doesn't matter where I am. It doesn't matter who has said that I shall not grow. That you will grow. That you will be promoted. Somebody is sitting on your fire. Somebody wants you dead because of the position that God wants to take you. But the Lord says no. There is a stamp I have put on you. There is a stamp of promotion. Somebody say you will not get married. God has said you'll be married. Who is that person that is saying you shall not? Child of God, speak to the Lord this morning. Activate the power that is in you. Begin to speak to what God has put inside of you. Daniel was in a slavery land, in a foreign land, but he was recognized because of his God, because of what God has planned. God's plan for you cannot be stifled by people. He said, my plan for you of greatness, of a good future. That's what God has for you. Every voice that is speaking against that. No human person is to determine your case. God has established you as his own. Oh, 
biri 